Component two of our seven components is a plan for managing your liquidity. Liquidity is how much readily available cash you have on hand for meeting immediate wants and needs. Liquidity assets include cash and assets that can be quickly and easily turned into cash. Note that your liquidity is different from your net worth. You may have a number of valuable assets, but if they are not liquid, they will not be of or they will be of little use to you when you're faced with a short term financial need. Again, the difference between liquidity and net worth net worth could include your car which and things that might not be easily turned into cash. For example, what happens if your car breaks down and you need to fix it? It requires liquid cash, cash that you can come up with. A good financial plan will help you manage your liquidity so you don't get caught off guard by unexpected expenses. Money management and credit management decisions are both involved in liquidity management. Money management involves making decisions about how much cash or liquid assets to keep in reserve and how much to invest in less liquid assets such as real estate like buildings and land. You may have money invested, but it isn't easy, easily accessible. Money management helps determine how much money to keep liquid to avoid cash shortfalls. So again, you're going to make some money. You don't want to invest it all. You have to have some available for unexpected events. Credit management involves making decisions about getting credit and using credit. Basically, borrowing money. Credit is commonly used to cover immediate cash shortfalls, so it increases liquidity. We have more liquid money. Credit can be very costly, especially if you are using credit cards. When you use credit, for example, you borrow money, the lender charges you interest on the money you borrow. Interest is like rent on the money you borrow. It, what it costs you to borrow that money. Some lenders charge higher interest on money than others. It's not wise to rely on credit cards if you're not able to pay back the borrowed money real quickly. Again, credit cards charge a lot of interest for the money that you borrow. A financial plan should contain a credit management path plan. Maybe part of that management plan would be limiting the number of credit cards you have or having a an amount of credit that you can, a certain amount of credit that you can have at a certain amount of time. Managing liquidity can be summarized here. You have money management and credit management. In your money management, you keep some money available in case it's needed. Credit management ensures access to credit if you need it. Borrowing money isn't bad. It's just how much you borrow at one time. Put those together. You have access to money and credit, and those will, be cover, those will help cover expenses that cannot be covered by current income. Component three is planning for your finance. Plan, a plan for your financing. Major purchases can require borrowing money for long periods of time. It's common to pay for a portion of the cost of these, pur these purchases and to take a loan or finance the, the remaining amount. A down payment is initial payment made when something is bought on credit. Okay, so for example, you're going to go and purchase a car you might have a car that you're going to purchase for $10,000. And before you purchase the car and go into the bank for a loan, you may accumulate $2,000 for a down payment. So when you go into the bank, you are going to ask for $8,000 because you have $2,000 as a down payment. 
Down payments make it easy or less likely that you will default on your loan. You've invested some money already in the car with the down payment. If you look at your financing your process, you can see that a lot of times for larger items, you may have somebody you're going to borrow money from, your lender, and then you have some available, which is your down payment. Okay, so again, amount of funds borrowed, your money, and that comes up with your purchase amount. For example, in the car that I had, you may have $2,000. You're going to ask for $8,000, and the purchase amount was a $10,000 car. This type of borrowing or finances financing differs from borrowing that credit cards are often used for. Long-term financing is usually available at a lower cost to the borrower that can be found with credit cards. So if you're going to go borrow money for a home or a car or a boat or something large like that, you're going to go and find some borrowing through a bank or financial institution rather than using a credit card because it's a lot cheaper to do that. The use of long-term financing requires great caution. For example, if you cannot pay back the money that you borrow on a car, for example, the, the $8,000 on that example I used it before, the lender can take back or repossess the car from you. You lose the car plus that $2,000 down payment you already paid for it. Most, for most big ticket purchases, the item you buy is used as collateral and the lender can seize the asset if you may, if you fail to make payments. A number of factors determine how much oops, how much money you can borrow and the payment terms. Payment terms include information. This is when you go borrow money. Payment terms include information about the interest rate and the time period for paying back the loan. For example, like if you're going to go purchase a house, you're probably going to pay back for 20 or 30 years. You might be lent more money than you should borrow. Remember, lenders make their money by charging you interest on the amount of money that they loan. When you borrow money, you have to make you have a payment schedule that requires you to make timely payments. And lenders will determine how much they feel that you can pay back at one period of time. Okay, we're going to take a look at math problem number three. Rustin plans to buy a car that is priced at $3,500. He has saved $1,000 for a down payment and his grandparents have agreed to contribute another $500 towards a purchase. How much of the vehicle will he have to need or will he need to finance? Okay, remember, Rustin can put down a total of $1,500 on the car and finance the remainder. Because we have the $1,000 he saved and the $500 his grandparents are giving him. So $3,000 he wants to take out as a loan. His down payment will be $1,500, so he will have to finance $2,000. Component four, our next component, component four is a plan for managing your risk. As you accumulate assets, you will need to come up with a plan to protect your assets as you accumulate them. What happens if you purchase a car and your car is stolen or rammed in the parking lot? Somebody puts a dent in there. Unless you have insurance on the car, you will suffer the loss of the asset yourself. You are assuming the risk. For this, many people purchase insurance, and insurance is a mean of protection for financial loss. Risk is related to the likelihood of loss. If there's a greater chance of, of you suffering a financial loss, then the risk is higher. For that reason, many people purchase insurance. Insurance planning is a component of your financial plan. It determines the types and the amount of insurance you need. So again, you have to plan it, plan for managing your risk. What other assets should you insure? Think about it. Assets, 
and the, the risk of loss. People, people typically insure things like houses, boats, cars, their jet ski, whatever type of assets you have. Insurance you might have for unexpected events would include for illness and injury. For example, you would probably buy medical insurance. And that doesn't prevent you from getting ill or injured, but it'll help pay the cost. And life insurance. People will buy uh, life insurance and provides a cash amount in the event of death. And a lot of people will buy life insurance and it'll help cover the cost of their funeral when they pass away. Component five then is a plan for your investing. You know you need to accumulate some liquid funds to meet day-to-day expenses and pay for sudden unexpected, unexpected events. But any funds you do not spend should be invested with the expectation of earning even more money. Some people will invest it by just placing it in a savings account that they have to keep a certain dollar amount in. Investing again is putting money into something to make a profit. Common types of investments include stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and real estate. When you put it in to those types of investments, remember, you can get your cash out, but it's not quite as liquid. It may take several weeks to a month to to get your money liquid. Continue on, continuing on with a plan for investing. People invest money so they can make more money. You have a chance of making more money. Remember that different types of investments have different levels of risk. The riskier the investment can produce produce greater returns, but it also may experience significant losses. Some investments you will not lose money on, but the percent of increase or profit is smaller. So again, you have to be a little bit wise on what you're investing your money in. Component six of the seven components is a plan for your retirement. People who plan for retirement while they're young, may be able to retire early. Retirement planning involves determining how much money to save for retirement and how to invest that money. The government provides several ways to save for retirement that allows you to accumulate wealth without paying taxes until you retire. So there's different ways that you can put away money and invest it for your future. That's another whole chapter. And the last component that we're going to go over is component seven, a plan for communicating and keeping your records. Remember, communicating your financial plan to your family is very important, Um, especially your spouse. If you are planning to do something with your money, it should be communicated really well so there's less arguments about your financial condition. Keeping good records of your finances is equally important. These records will help you when you file your taxes and calculate your net worth. And your heirs may also need these records at some point as well. So again, communication, um, setting goals, communicating it with your family is very important so everybody knows what's going on. A little summary of the chapter is financial planning involves specifying financial goals. It involves describing The spending, financing, investing plans needed to reach those goals, and your plan is like a blueprint for your financial future. A good financial plan contains the seven key components that we just covered in the last two sections. You need to know your budgeting and taxes, managing liquidity, or your readily access to cash, which is covered in this lecture, financing large purchases. What are you going to do when you want to make a large purchase? Managing your risk, and that was managing it through purchasing insurance. Investing your money, how are you going to invest the extra money that you have? Planning for your retirement and the transfer of your wealth after you are gone. And communicating and keeping good records.